the strategies that are the most um, important and or fruitful uh, for SDG achievement um, are the ones that um, build local data ecosystems. So it's a bit of a fuzzy concept. Everybody talks about data ecosystems, uh, but I think it's a, it's important to like really understand uh, that the SDGs will not be achieved uh, only by being measured from from the outside or or even being measured by by governments, for instance. Um, so there needs to be a, like a systemic approach, meaning uh, to building connections, building relationships, uh, building trust uh, in at the at the country level uh, among different st stakeholders and actors. So not only uh, governments, but also between governments and, and the private sector, uh, between private sector and uh, and civil society and citizens. Um, so some people have. Um, talked about the notion of PPPPs, so public-private people partnership, uh, and I think it's the kind of approach or the kind of strategies that um, have the most uh, potential uh, to foster the kind of like social change that the SDGs embody. Uh, so when it comes to, to big data, so the kinds of actions that I think um, should be taken to uh, to 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 help achieve or to contribute to the to the SDGs uh, and more broadly to the the kind of, of social change that the SDGs um, underpin, uh, meaning so like a more democratic and like more developed and less unequal world, etc. Um, so big data can be extremely disempowering. Uh, it can actually enhance uh, inequalities uh, because the people who have and and the, and the institutions that have access to the so-called big data in terms of both data and technology to make use of the data uh, are the most powerful actors. So there are governments, uh, including or especially surveillance agencies, uh, also big corporations. So the real challenge is to make big data in a sense work for the average um, citizens. Um, and I think there are two ways uh, in which that can be done. One is to um, invest heavily in what has been called data literacy or literacy in the age of data, uh, which is giving people incentives and opportunities to navigate and shape the world of data. So question the, the data collection process, uh, use data in their daily lives, uh, hold their governments to account. Um, so being able to read graphs at the most like basic level, but also at higher levels. So that's the first um, that's a, a, a first way um, and a first requirement, I think. The second is to, which is complementary or corollary, is to give people greater control over their own data. Uh, so a lot of the data that the private sector collects, uh, so cell phone data, bank the transaction data, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are data about people. So it's data that people emit or create just by using services or devices. Um, and most of, of them, or most of us, don't really know what is done with these data. So we sign or we click, we consent, we give our agreements without reading the agreements. So that's just one part of the whole like control dimension or control issue around data. But I think giving people incentive to really get greater direct control over the data, meaning deciding how the, their data can be used for which purposes, um, and, and when and by whom uh, will go a long way in actually so promoting, fostering um, the kind of, yeah, again, social change that the SDGs um, aim to promote.